All right, guys, so here it is. This is my bug out bag. It's a handy dandy little bag. It's made by Mercury. It's got lots of little doodads in it. But there's a common mistake that is often made almost every single time somebody makes a bug out bag. They always start with the bag. This is a mistake that every single YouTuber does when they, when they make their bug out bag videos. Because how much do you really know is going to fit in that bag? How are you actually going to store the things inside or outside of it? Maybe you want something on the outside that you could shove water bottles into like a hiking bag. We have to do this in reverse. What we have to do is take stock. We have to make a list of the things that we want. We can find them online. We can download them. We can make this our bug out bag. Never start with the bag because what happens if you get everything that you want in the bag and it doesn't fit in the bag? So that's where we're going to start. Hey, also don't forget to like and subscribe and follow. I'll just give that thumbs up thing. It really helps with the videos. All right, let's just knock it out. So you're not going to have all the stashes that I have. I've spent years putting all this stuff together. This is what I call my camping shed. I have a little bit of everything. There's probably about six or seven different packs right down there. All sorts of stuff and supplies inside of there. Who even knows what's inside that box? But uh, we're going to start looking for stuff that's on our list to add to what we already know is inside the bug out bag. Right now, let's just forget the bag. So this is what it looks like when you have a family of six and 15, maybe 16 grandchildren that you know of, and you start to acquire all sorts of different prepper items and camping gear and all the different little things that give you the ability to equip an army. You start, you start getting all sorts of stuff and 20 of this and 20 of that and you got your best stuff and you got your worst stuff, but this is what it looks like. So enjoy the show. Okay guys, the weather is changing so I had to grab everything and take it into the house. Uh, there, I'm gonna put the picture there. It's already it's already been, like been kind of organized. I think I'm right on with the checklists and uh, now we're gonna talk about them. Now what I've done is I've broken my checklist into 18 areas. Those 18 areas are very specific. It seems like a lot, but it really isn't. It even includes the pack. Now, before we get started, I will be supplying some links somewhere for you to find. Big whoop. Let's get started. The first section is air. I'll be posting pictures up here so you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. Each of the specific sections has its own little picture. When we talk about air, we talk, we're talking about air quality. In the event of a really bad, bad situation, we know lots of them that goes around in our little prepper heads, we're going to need to be able to, at the minimum, filter out the particulates that are in the air. And that's why I have that section, and it weighs almost nothing. The next section is water and hydration. I'm very specific about my water needs. I know that I need to start with water. People like to go and it's like, I'm going to be a survivor, and they have like one, one little life straw, and they think that's going to do it for them. And it might actually work. The problem is it's a limited capability in this particular case. Water is one of the priorities within these sections. One is none, two is one. I personally believe in carrying a lot of water filtration capability, a lot of water purification capability, and a lot of water storage capability. Three days without water, you know the rule. Now you may be noticing that I'm not showing you a lot of detail about what is in here because that's, that's going to be in the links. Also, I'm going to be doing a follow-up video for each of the sections so that I can explain them in detail for you. That should explain it. The next section is food. Food is actually pretty simple. I see a lot of preppers making mistakes. They're trying to cut corners with the whole, I need to have ultralight food, which is normally the dehydrated food, that junk that you buy from Walmart, and mm, mm, it tastes good. No, it doesn't. It tastes like junk. Anywho... I make my food so that I do not need to even heat it if I don't want to. Everything that is in my food packs for three days are literally like MREs. You just spoon them out or you eat the bar or you pour the, 
You pour, you don't need liquid for anything other than to hydrate yourself or make a hot cup of coffee. Clothing and warmth, very, very important. Everybody's bug out bag is gonna be different. Mine, I want it to be able to be a 72 hour bag. I want it to be able to support me for an extended period of time. And uh, we can't predict the weather. So if I get soaking wet, I'm gonna to need to be able to get out of my wet clothes, hang them up someplace. Hopefully I'll have a have place to hang them up. And then while that's happening, have another pair of clothes to stay warm in. That's the whole purpose of the clothing and warmth section. Also, a baseball hat, a little thingy for your head, and some work gloves. And uh, don't forget, the, you got to be able to fix those things too. There's a little kit in there. The next one is shelter and bedding. I know how to survive. And surviving sucks. I plan on thriving. And obviously, I'll be carrying a little bit more weight than most people. But it's really not that bad. At a minimum, I'll thrive in my shelter. I'll be warm, and I'll have the ability to dry out clothes inside my shelter, too. Fire! Yep, that's right. The next section is the, the fire kit, the fire starting kit. You got to have the, this ability. I rank fire right up there with water. One is none, two is one. Have as many ways as possible, as long as you're not carrying 55 pounds worth of fire starting material in your pack. I carry a lot of lightweight and ingenious ways to start a fire or even cook if you wanted to in my pack. Next, we'll talk about first aid. First aid is very important to me. It's one of my main pillars for bug out bags because you never know what you're going to do. You need more than a boo-boo kit. You need to be able to do some kind of stop the bleed. You need a small trauma kit. As you can see by the picture up there, I have a little bit of everything inside of my kit. It's a little bit bigger than most would carry, but it's also got pretty much everything you'll ever want inside of a first aid slash stop the bleed trauma kit. Personal hygiene and sanitation. That's right. We're all, we all got it. We all do it and we all got to do the paperwork. It's just that easy. I've got a handy dandy way of taking care of this problem that I learned from 20 years in the infantry. Yeah. Yeah. You learn, you learn pretty quickly how to get the job done and it does not involve hand sanitizer no matter what people tell you. Coming in at number nine, the core survival tools, as I call them. You can see by the picture, that's a pretty nifty little setup. I can't really talk to you about all of it, but you should be able to tell that I can pretty much do whatever I want with those tools. They're very lightweight, they're very useful, and uh, they will get the job done. Navigation, being able to get from point A to point B. There's three main essentials to the navigation kit. One is a compass, two is a GPS. If you don't have one, you probably ought to get one, even though you're a master navigator of the world like I am. The GPS makes things very, very easy. You're going to see the GPS again here in the future. And of course, maps. You don't see any pictures of maps right there because I'm in the process of updating my maps. I just found out there's some new ones for this county. And uh, yeah, that's what's going to be happening. Illumination. That's right. Sometimes we need to be able to light our way. I believe in having multiple forms of illumination as long as they are lightweight and dependable. So not only do I have the kinds that are chemicals, I have the kind that you can recharge, and I have the kind you can throw some little batteries in. Got to have some light. Communication, that's right, our ability to reach out and talk to people. Hopefully that EMP doesn't destroy everything. Maybe I should get some Faraday bags for this stuff. Yeah, I think so. Maybe just sticking some Mylar for right now. There's an idea. Anyway, if you, if you take a look at the picture, you're going to see that I have multiple forms of communication. And uh, you're going to see that GPS in there again, too, because that's actually a satellite communicator. I can send text messages to other GPSs in my system, and I can also send text messages to people with cell phones, believe it or not. It's pretty cool. You might want to look into it. And don't forget, always have something to write on and write with. There's some pencils, there's some pens, and that is waterproof paper. So that, yeah, I can even write in the rain if I want to, or I can leave a note for someone. Self-defense. Now, there's a lot of terms of service issues depending on where this video shows up. So I'm not going to be showing you anything that, uh, that someone might not like. But I'm going to show you the supplemental stuff that is, I can definitely show you on all the different video platforms. I'm going to need both of those things. And um, I'm even ordering a, a, new, a new magazine holster just to make sure that I'm covered on all ends. Portable power. You got to have a little bit of portable power. You need a good battery source that you can not only recharge, but is good to go. And you need to know how many times you can charge your stuff. So I de definitely recommend that you get one. I also recommend that you get one that is has solar power. 
buy one that actually works. I actually have a specific brand that I use. I keep one, I have one in like a window, I have one in my Bob, and I have uh, one in one of my vehicles. And uh, it, literally, I just keep it up on the dash all the time. You've probably seen my older videos. It works every single time. I like to be able to charge stuff. Also, make sure that you have the appropriate charging cables for the items that are in your Bob. Otherwise, you're gonna be screwed. And don't forget the, uh, the outlet adapter because you never know where you might be able to stop and actually charge everything up for a couple hours and then move on and not have to worry about that whole solar capability. Documents. That's right. In the document section, there's, there's actually four things. We'll talk about them very briefly here. One is copies of your driver's license, your passport, your government IDs, and other very important documents that you, that you, that you feel as if you would need if you had to bug out. The other thing is credit cards. Credit cards will still work up until the time they won't work. And they can get you out of a jam when the system is operational. Don't forget that USB drive that's going to have all the digital documents that connect you to the world and, and prove who you are and what you own. It's always a good idea to have that. And then, of course, the guides. Uh, those are the three guides that I use. You can see them up there. Uh, those things are awesome. You can pick them up on Amazon. You know, Obviously, there'll be a link down below, blah, blah, blah. But uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty awesome. They're lightweight, and they tell you everything you need to know about everything. Money and barter. That's right. At some point, we may have to start bartering, but money will work for a while. So you need to have a little pocket money in your bug out bag that it's always there and waiting for you to use in an emergency. As you can see in the picture, I also carry a little bit of silver with me. And those little blue bottles, those little blue bottles, I got them spun around so you can't see the brand name, but let's just say they're not... They're, they're not eye drops. No, they're not. Those are the things that people love to trade with and they're pretty good too. We're almost done. Miscellaneous survival tools and supplies. Yeah, it's a pretty simplified list. Sunglasses, a small roll of duct tape. Yeah, that's right. You can actually buy small rolls of duct tape. Sunscreen, paracord, contractor bags. I always carry at least two. One, one to line the pack and one uh, to use for whatever because they don't weigh anything. Some zip ties and some Ziploc bags. That's right, I just gave you that right off my list. Number 17. And of course, the last thing, the actual bag. Now, I don't know if this will fit. I, I know this stuff will fit in a 65 liter bag, which I have a couple of those. I wanna try to get it into a little bit smaller bag. I'm gonna go for a 50 liter bag. So we're gonna see what happens. All right, let's go see what happens. So this is what it looks like when you're, when you're, when you're trying to pack 100 pounds of you-know-what into a 25-pound bag. Now, most of the time, these things actually work out for themselves. And these backpacks are pretty resilient, and, and you can pretty much push a lot of stuff into these little bitty bags if you know what you're doing. I'll explain the process later on, but uh, for now, just enjoy the show again. So it looks like it fit. Oddly enough, the center top pouch was empty, still empty, and the waist belt packets, uh, little pockets on the side of the waist belt, they were both empty. So you'd still have that room to play around with different little things here and there. I could probably still have a GPS or something in those. Now, if you notice, I packed it in a manner that focuses on the top, middle, and bottom. And the reason you do that for pretty much every backpack is because you want, at the very top of your pack, access to your emergency items, your first use items, and your rain gear. 
the brain of that pack is really handy for a lot of different stuff. Then in the middle, you want your food and you want your supplies. And then at the, bo at the bottom, you want your shelter and your comfort gear. And obviously, it should all go inside a waterproof bag. It's just plain smart. And for all the tactical guys who just have to have some kind of 500 Cordura bag so they can blend into the environment, cha-ching! Yep, you don't even have to spend a lot of money on those bags anymore. Just go get yourself a, uh, a waterproof rain cover for your pack in the, the type of camouflage that you like. They're all over Amazon. Now, the big question was, how much did the pack weigh? Let's take a look at it actually being worn so you know how big it's going to be or how big it's really not. Taking a look at the silhouettes, it's not a huge pack. It's a 50 liter pack. It's actually my Walmart pack. But I'll find a link for both the Walmart pack as well as something you can get on Amazon if you want to. Now that magical weight of that pack was 39.4 pounds. And uh, technically, based on my weight, that's still within the 20% rule for packs. Now, people make that up. It's, tech, it's supposed to be around 35% if you're going to be making a bug out bag. But if you can stay in the 20% range of your, based on your body weight, you're doing pretty good. You're going to be comfortable. Also remember that that weight is what they call a wet weight. That is full of two liters of water and three days of food. So that weight will slowly go down once, that, once you drink the water and once you, or, and once you consume the food. Now, don't forget, I'm going to be making a segment video on each one of the sections of this bug out bag and explaining in detail why I have those particular pieces in that particular section and what their function is and where I found them and showing you how you can get them too. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to just mash all those buttons. And of course, stay safe. Have a great day and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. Oh, you're still here. Well, guess what? I've actually found some holes in my preps that I wanted to tell you about. Thanks for sticking around. The first thing I noted was that my maps were not up to date. Sometimes it just happens. You got you to be looking for those maps, guys. Hard paper maps. Then I noticed that I was missing my UV5R charging cable. It's a USB cable designed to charge the larger batteries that you can buy with the UV5R. Then I, then I couldn't find my good ferrule rods anywhere. I got some really nice ones that I like to keep with me and go camping with, and I haven't camped in a year, so I just couldn't find them. I also couldn't find my magnesium block that I was going to throw in there just for good measure. And I was also missing some documentation that I wanted to make sure that I have, had on that thumb drive, so I'll definitely be updating that. All right, that's going to be it this time, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.